Now we move on to the second topic that's about training and uh, development process. When we talk about training and development process, what is the kind of a method we can adopt so that you know we can provide a best kind of a training. There is no single kind of a method that you know seems to be proven one but uh, we need to look at uh, the kind of a name department and the kind of an organizations and accordingly you know according to the employee skill set we may have to work out a different kind different different kind of you know uh, development tools or what you call the training tools now let's try to look at how the training and development process happens first uh, hr department has to determine what are the kind of a training needs are there by practically visiting or probably having a meeting with the different uh, department heads and try to find out that where is the skill gap and uh, we try to you know probably identify that particular need what you call T and D uh, you know T N D so training need uh, you know analysis or T N S you know training need uh, specifications or uh, you know these are the ways we need to look into it and once that has been done based on that we try to establish a specific kind of an objective out of this particular training what exactly you know the employee is supposed to learn and the next one is we select the right kind of a training and development methods what is the kind of a method will be more appropriate for making the employee learn the particular objectives and we try to implement the training and development program and evaluate the training and development programs time to time whether it has been effective or not now let's move on to the first part of it that is determining a training and development needs uh, in order to compete uh, effectively firm must uh, keep employees well trained that means they need to be keep updated with what is happening in the you know, market and the latest kind of a skill set they are supposed to you know, develop over a period of time and uh, only the company who is implementing a training will be more learning kind of an organization rather than the company who is not into. So that's the way if you look into it, uh, determining a training need is very very important. And other one is second step is establishing a training and development objectives. Uh, in the objectives you know we try to work out what is the desired kind of an end results, what is expected out of this particular uh, training program and uh, that particular objective has to be more clear and concisely you know the objective must be formulated and most of the time you know the training uh, will be on the operational side as to you know probably fill the gap of the skill set on the other side if you look into it the training can be to provide uh, future insight for an employee so that the employee will be ready to face the kind of you know changes which is happening in the market so that's one of the major kind of an objective and uh, now let's try to look at what are the kind of a training and uh, development methods have been adopted uh, there are different kind of you know method can be adopted uh, one is your classroom programs that nothing but your regular kind of a classroom training and uh, the next one is a mentoring uh, some you know uh, leader in that particular department or a boss can take up the mentoring role or HR department HR manager can take up the mentoring role he can mentor the employee as to what are the way actually you know you need to change his behavior or probably you know the sharpen his skills and the next one is a coaching coaching is nothing but you know there is the immediate boss try to coach him on the particular role so that you know the employee is getting ready to you know take up that and the next one is a role playing method through the role play method the behavioral kind of you know training can be provided and a simulation method will help you out in understanding the you know various kind of a standard techniques and distance learning and video conferencing can provide you know knowledge update and e-learning can provide a complete knowledge update on the job training provides you a lot of skills enabled you know kind of a training and job rotation gives you kind of a different perspective and uh, you know it will help you in sharpening your skills and internships will provide you a kind of an you know idea as to what is the way actually you know different departments and different organization work that we gives an you know we'll get an idea so now let's come to the first part of it that is classroom programs when it comes to the classroom programs uh, it has to be you know continuous and it has to be effective in many types of an employment training and may incorporate some of the you know other methods like it could be in you know, uh, inside the classrooms there could be a case scenario can be discussed and uh, other things can be provided ultimately you know classroom training mainly to you know create an awareness we can adopt this kind of a classroom programs and to you know probably make them you know learn further and then bring into the effectiveness on the job you know other training programs also has to be accompanied along with the classroom programs now let's look at what is mentoring is all about mentoring is nothing but uh, it's kind of you know advising coaching and nurturing for creating a practical kind of a relationship to enhance the individual uh, career 
and uh, personal and professional growth and development. So mentor may be located elsewhere in the organization or in other firm, but they come as a kind of, you know, one time activity. They try to give you the mentor mentorship and relationship might be formal or it could be informal. So these are the ways actually, you know, mentoring has been done and uh, it's basically, you know, uh, for the personal as well as the professional friend, how an employee can develop himself. That is a major objective of a mentoring. And the next one is a coaching. Coaching is nothing but its immediate boss responsibility is to coach him to, you know, probably uh, what you call it as he becomes a kind of an uh, what you call it as uh, uh, develops an employee for the particular position and uh, provide assistance much as a mentor. The coacher actually, you know, provide assistance much as a mentor. So ultimately, you know, by coaching, we can make the particular employee champion. So that's the way actually, you know, it's a very vigorous kind of a method. The next one is a role playing method. Uh, it's a response to a specific problem, uh, you know, whatever happened uh, in the organization or a job. Uh, it's basically to, you know, probably teach uh, skills like interviewing skills or it could be grievance handling, performance appraisal reviews, conference leadership and uh, team problem solving and communication, all those kind, kind of a thing, you know, we can learn through this particular method. And the simulation is another kind of a method. It's a devices uh, that uses a model, uh, you know, the real world or a problem replicating in the actually, you know, task away from the job site. So we can take him to some other particular place and away from a particular situations, how he performs that particular, uh, you know, task in a more uh, simulated kind of an environment. So that's the way also, you know, employee learns many things and distance learning and a video conferencing, it's a kind of an interactive kind of a training. And uh, through this interactive kind of a training method, it helps to, you know, increase the access to the training and uh, ensure consistency of the instructions and reduce the cost of delivering a training and de de you know, development program. So through the distance learning, we can only provide them a knowledge and an awareness level and e-learning and on the job training. If you look into it, uh, e-learning, I hope all of you might be very familiar with is an number lot on describe the online instructions and on the job training is nothing but it's basically for increasing the skill set of an employee. This will be more effective and it's an informal kind of an approach side by side. The boss is standing there when you are doing a job, he tries to, you know, correct it how you're supposed to do it effectively. So that's a way actually, you know, you've been permits the employees to learn job tasks by actually performing them. It's most commonly used, uh, you know, training and development method is your on the job training and no problem transferring uh, what has been learned to the task. And ultimately, you know, immediately they could able to adapt the, the effectiveness of the on the job training will be much, much higher than any other kind of a method. And the other one is the job rotation. So employees have been moved from one, uh, job to another job for a broader kind of an experience. Normally this kind of a job rotation happens uh, during the fresher period or probably, you know, when it has reached an equilibrium or probably the maturity stage. So which helps the employee, new employee understand the varieties of job and based on that, you know, we'll try to test him which job he could able to do a better job, a uh, better kind of, you know, uh, performance. So these are the kind of, you know, methods have been commonly been adopted and uh, uh, on the job training is a, one of the popular kind of a method uh, been very, very, uh, you know, effectively been used in training and development.